Okay. Hi, Mark. Hi. All right, so it is 6.01. I'm going to keep an eye on the waiting room. Um, I said earlier to early arriving folks that Sigrid is not going to be able to join us tonight. <clears throat> Seiji Ohashi is our new board representative replacing Amanda, and Seiji is out of town. And then Mel Hauser is planning to join us at about 6.20 or so. Uh, she anticipated that, they, that she was coming out of a meeting that wasn't going to be over just in time. Um, it's great to see you all again. Thank you for joining. Um, all right, so you'll see me glance up because I have our agenda and some other note-taking documents on the, on the big screen here in the library MHS. Um, is there any public comment? I do not see any members of the public. I did have an inquiry from a member of the public about joining these meetings, so I thought we might see somebody. Um, moving on to the consent agenda, um, which I, I think I kind of messed this up, so we'll just call it early part of the agenda. Um, did those of you who reviewed the minutes from the last meeting, uh, did anybody have any adjustments or corrections that they would like to make? Okay, seeing none, we will approve the minutes of the meeting. Can I get thumbs up if that works for you? All right, minutes approved, great. Um, uh, so the reason this isn't really the consent agenda is that uh, I added the bullet point to discuss the vision statement models and how the board will use our findings. So uh, I thought this was a particularly good question from a number of members of the committee, uh, Sigrid being one, and I'm sorry that, that uh, she's not on the call to join us for this, but I think as we were talking, as we've been talking about the survey and other kinds of community engagement and outreach, a number of you have been asking, okay, essentially it'll be helpful for me to shape this process if I understand how the board will use our findings, uh, what our final product will look like, et cetera. And so, in service of, and it was one of those perspective taking things. I've done a fair amount of thinking about that. I've looked at other models, uh, not fair for me to assume that uh, everyone else has done the same. And so I sent around that document that had a number of vision and value statements from other districts that I had found. Um, and I, I just wanna give a quick question, you know, was that useful and did that, lead you all to other questions. Um, I think for the sake of brevity, I'm gonna not do a sort of circle process in this, on this topic, but if you did have questions or observations about those model statements, uh, especially as they relate to our process, please you know, either raise a virtual hand or a real hand and go for it. Go Susie. Um, I did read through and I think that was helpful. And again, I guess I kind of liked more of the ones that were more sort of simple and less on and on and on and on and on. I think that that shows that like, you know, we know what we want, people can understand what we want and move along. I meant to take notes on the specific ones I liked, but I didn't. <laughs> Just to, to speak to that, I think um, I, I'm comfortable at this point with not making firm decisions about what our final product will look like until we sort of hear from people and have an understanding of the kind of information we're getting. Just because I'm comfortable with that doesn't mean that everybody else in this group is. And so I'm trying to, partly what I'm listening for is if folks feel like we need to have more structure on what we think our product will be, we can work more aggressively on that in the next few meetings. My inclination is to hold back, see the information we're getting, and then start to shape, shape our product as we have more information. Gail, did you raise a hand earlier? No. no. Okay. All right, so let's keep moving. Um, Check-ins and reflections from the last meeting. 
Uh, I think I just covered to everybody that uh, Seiji is joining us as a board member, but is not here for this meeting. Amanda Garces is stepping off the committee, is still interested in paying attention. And um, so we may get to see her on some of our meetings if, if she's avail available on a Monday night. Um, Estherlene Carlson, unfortunately, has formally resigned in a communication to me. And I will, I need, I realize I just need to send that to board members. Um, Estherlene had said early on that she was not sure she could commit to this. And I was, I'd asked her to sort of consider it and, and give it some time because I was really hoping we would have her voice here. Um, so that's just a status check. Um, the same way that initially the board expanded the number of student seats to include all the students who had, who had uh, applied. Um, my guess is that if we have another interested student, then there might be space on this committee. I have not discussed that with the board. Okay, um, on to the community engagement process. The, here I am trying to scroll on you guys. Um, I wanna share, to kick this off, right? So we've got a, we've got a, a, a core survey to review, some ideas about thought exchange that I put out there, a rough outline of things folks might talk about in a listening session, and I'll get to what I mean by that. Um, and then we need to talk about, you know, how we're going to get the word out that we exist, that this project is ongoing, which, you know, how we're gonna reach people in the community, et cetera. So those are, those are the major things to talk about tonight. My vision is that by our next meeting, two weeks from now, we will have deployed a short survey via Thought Exchange. We will have held a couple of listening sessions, we being you know individuals or a couple people at a time. Uh, we will have deployed the, the bigger core survey and some people will have engaged with that. And in that process, we'll be learning whether this is effective or not. So basically we will be We'll be having our wheels turning, moving forward. Uh, we can reflect on what we've learned in that two-week period. And I, at least, would will feel much more confident once we're underway and am open to sort of revising and refining our process. But I, 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 my vision is that we are moving, you know, that I, my vision is that I spend all day tomorrow making these draft surveys into a Google form and into a thought exchange and getting you guys links to things like that and we can deploy them. Um, we may not get there, but I dearly hope that we can make that progress tonight. All right. <laughs> um, I also wanna say thanks to a number of you who got back to me individually with edits or suggestions and things like that. Um, did, so we haven't spoken, so we, we had our meeting on the 28th. We looked at the first draft survey. There was a lot of good <clears throat> feedback. Um, I tried to incorporate that feedback in a draft, which I sent around. And then I got some more feedback, tried to incorporate that and sent that around. That I sent a clean version to you all Friday evening, sort of without all the messy editing that's as visible. And I got some more feedback from there. And I've, I've got some notes beside me on that. Um, before we dig into the, the sort of the bigger survey, the um, I'll, I'll just pause. And did anybody sort of have thoughts or reflections they didn't have a chance to write to me about or things they want to say that are sort of big scope? Hi, Caitlin. Good to see you. I see your hand. Uh, Caitlin, Hi. you are up. Oh. Um, yeah, so I've been thinking about this a lot, and um, the two main things that I keep coming back to are, one is that I really feel like students are the answer to this, and um, we need to uplift their voice, give them more of a voice, and um, I mean, to the point where I sort of feel like the survey should just be for students. Um, I think that they really are the ones who will tell us what's going on right now in the school and what they're lacking and what they feel like they need. And then the other thing, um, did I just forget the other thing? 
might have. Yeah, let's go with that one for now. Raise, raise your hand again. I'll, I'll be okay. watching. Hi, Mel. Good to see you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm never sure whether to respond directly each time, but I uh, am going to. So, Kayla and I have had not the same thought, but I thought to myself, okay, we have about 1,200 students in our district, and I want before we leave tonight for everybody to to set a personal goal for how many, what percentage of our students will get to participate in this process in one way or another, because um, I'd love to see a large amount of participation. The other thing is that this is a district-wide visioning process and the district to me includes anybody who resides in the, in the community served by the district um, as, as well as professionals who work within the schools. And so I, to me that, including those voices is also part of this. But if, <laughs> Caitlin, if the way that you express that interest is by doing an incredible job recruiting students to participate, I'll take it. Right, and then Dottie. I mean, I think that this is, this effort is designed to create a structure for how the whole district moves forward. And maybe it includes, we are guided by our students, but not necessarily just what the students need right now, because that may not be what they need in 10 years, but it should include, it should be about making that a core value <clears throat> or whatever the values come up to be. I think it needs to, I, you know, I think we always want to hear from as many people as we can and be led by our students. And I think we're doing our best to do that, but we could codify it in this effort. Once we kind of come to a conclusion, that would be a good result. I think I definitely don't always want to be led by our students, but not just right now always. Dottie? Yes. Um, I wanted to say that I, I think the student voice is extremely important, but I think it's only one of three voices that we should hear. We should also hear from staff who work in the schools from their point of view, and we should also include families who have or have had children in the schools and who are expecting them to prepare their kids for the future. So we need to have a, you know, sort of a history to actual students to the future goals, because I think, um, you know, that is the only reason that we have schools is to prepare kids for what our best guess of what they'll need in the future. Yes. Um, Merrick, Kale, Emery, Amira, uh, Carmen, any of you have, or Amelia, do you have thoughts about where we are and how that survey draft is evolving? I see you, uh, Carmen, and then I see your hand, Mel, and I see your hand, Kale. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's already been mentioned some, but I've just found as a student, especially when I was younger, that um, families and caregivers and teachers can honestly be a lot clearer and sometimes better advocates for my interests than I can be at times. So I think even if we aren't directly asking only students, it's still maybe thinking about how to ask uh, those stakeholders as well, like what they see for students, what they need is another way we could get student input without going directly through students, but. Yep. Okay. Uh, I see you, Amira. So uh, Mel, then Kale, then Amira. And then, and then I'm gonna move to getting some of this work done, okay? Um, a couple of thoughts. Um, I have intentionally been asking all of my patients ranging ages five through probably like 15 the last couple since our last meeting what's the point of school 
literally none of them could tell me. I found that interesting. So I wanted to neutrally describe that. And it, to me, made me wonder if, um, even though I, as a grown up, like, I know what the point of school is, it's to prepare the kids for the future. Maybe we need to learn from this anecdote of if we don't name the thing of what we're trying to teach to like, what's the point of school? There are, I think there's just a lot of brains who can't see it. And there's so many things about day-to-day life in society that violates people's autonomy and invalidates them. Like I just, um, though I share the sentiments that we want to be representing the voices of all the people, not just the students, I do think that that we're, we're, we're not necessarily drawing out student voice. And, and this survey I still think is too long and does not necessarily, um, because it, it, it covers so much, it's so comprehensive that I'm concerned that it dilutes the most important part. And there was one more thing and I'm forgetting. Yeah, remembered, can't believe it. Um, It was brought to my attention by a community member, one of my patients, families, that the middle school did a project, the teacher Don Taylor, who did a, um, a middle school leadership group that studied already the values and needs of the middle schoolers. And, um, and, and I, don't, I don't know if anyone was at the school board meeting when this was, was presented. Um, they sent me a link to it that I can send you, Nathan. Like these sweet little loves, they did this project already and they actually came up with, they, 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 did, a, they did focus groups, they did a survey, they did like a whole bunch of things. It would be really cool to like see what they did and how they did that. So we don't have to, oh, interesting. Oh, 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 interesting. Just about on sustainability. Yeah. Um, what I, what I, what was summarized to me, I haven't watched the video, Libby, but it was the one where they talked about how they wanted more support for their identity. They wanted more project-based learning and they wanted a voice in their education. Those were the three take-home points of that project. Maybe it's a different project. But yeah, it was uh, if it was when I was superintendent. Oh, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was the last video year, like, one, yeah. That was about we were starting the sustainability project and it was at the middle school. And Don worked with um, three or four students, Nathan's son being one of them, Asa. Um, and they did a lot of that work. It was it was totally centered around designing what the sustainability program would be all about there. So it was, des- it was student led designing that program, if that makes sense. So it wasn't about MSMS as a whole. It wasn't meant to be. It was about def- It was about student voice in the sustainability process. Thank you, Mel. Kale? Um, this wasn't actually going to be the thing I was going to say, but I wanted to mention this and I don't, maybe this was mentioned before, but it, uh, this whole conversation about groups in the middle school is my one of the things that made me happy in the middle school in eighth grade was was crafter's edge and the end of seventh grade i think i may have spoken about this in the past and i maybe it was in a different group but the actions that the middle school did to make kids feel like they were running something like running a company made me feel like I was learning like it made me feel like I was adulting which is not like more than anything I was ever learning about if say that's you know parabolas or how to spell um so that's what that whole idea of the um sustainability conference made me think of but I also was wondering and, and maybe this is not something we should do but I agree that you lose a lot of, of, of heads or, or kids' voice when you, you give something that's long and tedious because I'm one of those kids who will not answer a survey 
if I if it's long and tedious. But maybe, but I know many adults would. Like my parents would love to answer a twenty question survey about my future. Um, and and I know we've talked about how we didn't want to have two separate surveys, but I don't know. It may not be a horrible idea. I don't know. Something to throw out there. Just a thing to say. Amira? Um, I'd have to agree with like Kale and Mel on like, I feel like as a teenager, especially like I am not good at voicing, like writing down on a survey and like being asked these questions of like what I think my education should look like. Because I also don't, I get the point of school, but at the same time, it doesn't always feel like I understand the point of school. Um, sometimes it feels like it's very pointless and like I'm not actually learning anything. And like Kale said, he brought up Crafter's Edge. And that was like a really good, I guess, way to kind of throw middle schoolers into kind of what running a business would be like. And I feel like it's very hard to like look at a survey and be like, yeah, that's how I want my edu. This is how I want my education to be. And so I do feel that having like adults and like staff answer the survey is really helpful because they know how to put those into words. But as teenagers, sometimes it's hard to put that into words. And um, it's just hard to know exactly what's right for you as like a learner all the time. So that's what I noticed about the survey and how I feel like it would be really nice to have two separate ones maybe. Um, I know that's a lot more work, but I think it could be beneficial potentially. So, yeah. Thank you, Amira. I wanna, I wanna respond to that and you gave me an idea in your comment, but I wanna hold on a second because I see Emery, Merrick and Kale and I want to start with Emery and then go to Merrick and then come to you, Kale, because you just spoke. And then I see Caitlin. Go ahead, Emery. Uh, yeah, I agree with what everybody else is saying, but I think it's definitely a good idea to have a separate format for the survey for like for kids and like younger adults. Um, and I remember in middle school sometimes like in TA, we would have discussions about that. So maybe we could do some way where we could have TA teachers kind of like not lead the discussion, but like collect thoughts and ideas because sometimes it's easier for people to vocalize them than to like write them down. So just as an option, like having kind of a teacher led sort of survey like that. Emory, that's great. Merrick? Just kind of building off of what Emery and Kale said, um, I definitely agree that we should probably look at different formats of how we can like assess and like get data from students. Because if we're if you're putting yourselves in the shoes of sort of like really any student who gets younger and younger as the grades go lower, I think it's going to be even harder for them to or for us to get good data from them with the survey since it is so long. I don't, I just don't see that younger kids are gonna fill it out. So um, if Kale, if you, and Caitlin, if you can hold for just a second, um, both Merrick and, um, goodness, Amira made me think, uh, I'm certainly open to, you know, if, if somebody wants to record a, a two minute or five minute video or even just an audio of answering two or three or four prompts uh, as a student, that that would be fine with me, right? That's a similar, similar to doing a sort of free written response on a survey. And as long as I or, or some subgroup of this committee is willing to listen to those and sort of, okay, what, what were the key words here? What are the key concepts? Um, if that feels like a more engaging instrument that accomplishes the same thing. I'm completely open to that. And so I'm curious to know, um, you don't have to respond right now, but I'm curious to know if that's appealing. Um, Kale and then Caitlin. 
I'm not against the idea. And I, I don't know if that's uh, like for someone like me, I'd love to talk about improving school for the rest of my life. But um, I, I kind of wanted to go back on one thing because I think someone said it and I don't remember what it was, but it made me think of this. Like there's a lot of, I don't want to say distrust in like students in surveys, but I remember last year, and, you know, I don't have the data and it was probably, but like, I know a lot of kids and I talked to a lot of kids when they asked us, like, there was a question last year and it posed was like, how do you want schedules to be lo- like, like at the, like coming into this year? And, you know, I heard a lot of opinions and a lot of people felt almost like, almost like their voice wasn't recognized when they saw the schedule and saw it as the same thing as it was previous years. Um, uh, and I think there's a lot of like, not distrust, but like sometimes people feel like they just send surveys, like people just send surveys to make it seem like their voices are being heard. Um, so that's another reason that I also think like, oh, a survey with large words is going to make, you know, kids kind of be like, oh, you know, they're just trying to put a lot of, you know, fancy school jargon into something and then they'll just do with what they want. Like this group will do with do what they want with that information. I don't know. I just think there is this idea that like a school survey is not going to fully be what they want. And that's why personally, I always like trying to get like in contact with the person that's doing it or be within the group. So I don't know, something like that. Thank you for that. Kaylin? Um, yeah, I <clears throat> like all of these ideas that are um, being talked about. And uh, I really just felt like when I opened this week's version of the survey, um, I felt frustrated because I felt like it was um, not that different from the week before. And uh, I felt like we all expressed a couple really common things about it. And um, so I don't know how we can like break this down and maybe like getting into small groups. We all look at it, we all pick it apart. We give you what we want, what we think it should be, and then we move on. But I just feel like it's a little bit talking in a circle about the survey. (laughs) Um, I'm trying to say that in a way that's useful. (laughs) Thank you. You can also be even a more hard edged if you wish. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, To Kale's point, I think one of one of the pieces of our process that I'm interested to see develop is what kind of feedback loop we offer to people who have participated, you know, where we give, you know, whether it's an email update or some other way of saying you participated in this process or you responded to a survey or or a community, engage, you know, community gathering, here's where we are in this process and here's what we're learning so far. Um, because I think that, that that feedback is important so that folks do feel heard and see the evidence of, their, of the, what they're submitting. Um, Nick in the chat um, said, are we able to slice the data in the end where we can isolate the data coming from only students or only staff, et cetera? And um, the answer is yes. Uh, And that's part of the reason that we're asking the demographic data, you know, are you a, what what town do you reside in? What's your age? Um, That that sort of thing, because it can get pretty interesting. Hi, Elliot, good to see you. Um, It can be pretty interesting, hold on a second, to see, oh, what did, you know, on this particular question, what if we just look at what the students responded? What if we just look at what folks from, you know, this age range responded or how they responded? Uh, so yeah, Nick, that is uh, that's the answer to that question. Um, Caitlin, uh, I, I hear your frustration and thank you for expressing it. Um, I will confess that, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to listen to the board and sort of district administrative leaders about where where do we want input from the community? And so that that can be kind of a big basket. 
in that I'm trying to draft questions that are uh, that explore those areas uh, as concisely as possible and balancing you know what I heard the at the first meeting around sort of not not constraining folks thinking too much but also giving some guidance and I, as you may have seen some some of what happened in in between one edition and another was that we I cut a bunch of questions, but then I added some in. For example, one of the pieces of feedback I got from Jim Murphy was, hey, we should ask people about, we should, we should be asking people if they have students who are enrolled not in MRPS, but who are part of the district, right? So do they go to a private school? Do they do homeschooling? Um, because it's really useful to know why they're making that choice and, and what things they value. And so it is, it continues to be perhaps more of a cornucopia than you or others might wish. Um, that said, so, it, and that's the other, you know, the other thing that I, that came up last time and I tried to reflect in my proposal about simultaneous methods as we launch is that I think we can do both and where we can have a survey that, uh, you know, Kale, like, what was Kale's word? Um, long, that for Kale is long and tedious, but maybe for Joe is not, or Nathan is not. Uh, but simultaneously, we can have a um, thought exchange survey and we can have listening sessions and we can um, have a few distilled prompts that people respond to. So my hope is that if we have a multi-prong approach, we can both gather data in, in the sort of broad spectrum and also be mindful of this being accessible. I don't know if that will completely satisfy your frustration, but I, I wanna be transparent about what I'm trying to balance. I think it will be helpful. I just, um, I guess I'm feeling like, are, how are we gonna get all that done? So hang one second. Merrick, is that a new hand? Okay. Oh, no, um, it's not. Sorry. So uh, to answer Caitlin's question, which may be a question from everyone, what I sent around included a six question sort of pre-survey teaser is what I called it. And that was the, you know, this might go out in a thought exchange. And I had, and I, by the, by the addition that I sent around, uh, on Friday that I think it's only six questions and um, hold on a second you know the the most of it's sort of about how you might access this process but the top question was when I think about kids in our schools these are the things I think they need most to thrive please list the first five words that come to mind and so to me that is an attempt at it's it's not asking too much, it's accessible. It then asks the question sort of how, how might we best include you in future steps? Um, so that would, to me, that's one prong. Another piece of that preparation is um, sort of second to last and this is called, um, nope, that's not true, hold on. Uh, Oh, core outline for listening sessions, it's the last thing. Um, and the core outline was a distillation of getting it down to 11 total queries or, or question areas. I want graduates to be known for their blank, the academic ac excellence for our students means uh, to learn effectively and thrive in our district. I think students need Character characteristics I hope students develop include Areas where I think schools should provide explicit teaching, values question, facilities, uh, which may be more than one question, the demographic, you know, I'm a student, parent, et cetera. What town do I live in? My student is at what school and what age bracket? And so, you know, in that, in that example, those would be, that's my rough outline for a listening session. And of that, you know, the last four are demographic things, which are, which I think are, um, I think what's called, they offer almost no cognitive burden. Those are not hard to answer. So it's really 
sort of the top six or seven questions. So anyway, that that's my, that's my attempt at you know okay. Here's a really light survey. Here's a longer you know if you're gonna if you're Tina Muncie and you're setting up listening sessions with the senior center, or you're Rhett and you're setting up listening sessions in Roxbury and I want to be there too. Um, here's a rough outline of of things we really do want to cover, and then there's the bigger survey which I've hung on to, as you're pointing out, Caitlin, because I think it is, um, it is guiding in terms of the, the full spectrum of what we want to explore. So, so how do we get there? Not just Caitlin, is I would like to, at the end of tonight, have you know, yes to the thought exchange, even if, it, if we edit it a little bit, yes to the distillation of topics for a listening session, and yes to a version of the comprehensive survey and there are, I think there are things that we can cut. And that gets us to at least three moving pieces that we can put into place immediately. And then let's see what happens. Uh, I see Tina, anybody else want to get in the queue? And K Caitlin, feel free to um, come back and respond. And I'm, I'm aware that I'm, I'm, I'm answering Caitlin because you asked a question, but I suspect you're asking a question that uh, you're not the only one who shares that question. Go, Tina. My concern is that um, if you're only asking a certain set of people three questions, four questions, and then you're asking everybody else four pages of questions, you clearly are not getting the same information from everybody. And I don't find that as fair. So if Four questions are good for a group of people. Why aren't four questions good for everybody? And I might say the board might like a lot of information, but they're not going to get it all this time. Sorry, Libby. <laughs> or maybe Rhett. <laughs> um, no, let's see your hand. Hang on a second. Um, I, I don't think that four questions is sufficient for the, the sort of breadth of this process as imagined by the board. Um, so for example, if somebody responds to the thought exchange prompt, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a complete overlap and it's only a partial overlap with any of the things that are being asked in the, in the broad survey. And I imagine the thought exchange might close with, um, you know, something to the effect of, uh, uh, you know, click here if you want to take the full survey, which might take 20 minutes, or no, not now, thanks. Um, but then that person is sort of in our contact list. And, and uh, you know, we can offer entries to the, to the full survey at future times. We're also going to have community gatherings, and community gatherings are not going to be a read-through of, um, of the whole survey, right? So it's, I'm, I don't, I'm not pretending that this is going to be completely symmetrical for all participants, right? I think we're just, we're, we're trying to gather. Uh, so imagine a community gathering where people are showing up in person. We might ask them a few demographic things because we wanna know who is in the room, but then we're gonna be taking and listening to their input, taking notes and bringing that back to this committee as further evidence and input. But you know, as Libby has pointed out before, in terms of, you know, if you ask a certain group of people at a certain time who show up at a certain meeting, what education looks like in our district or should look like, we may get a distorted vision. And so I think our job is to do that and do that and do that and then do this, right? And be as flexible and receptive as we can. And then our job as this committee, let's say we get through April, and we say, holy cow, we are, you know, we're getting no feedback from seniors ages 60 to whatever. Um, we really need to double down on our efforts to reach that group. Or no one is responding effectively to these two questions, Nathan. You're, clearly you didn't write them well. Or, so we need to go back to our list and ask them a, a new version of those questions. I mean, I think, I think, we, can, I think we can respond and we can identify where our needs are as they become evident. 
Um, Susie, I see your hand. So I've got Mel, Kale, and then Susie. I'm just wondering, do we as a visioning committee representing various sectors of the community, do we as a committee value universal design? Like, do we value that the way that we are collecting information from all people is important? Because that's going to inform where we go from here, because I'm concerned that we are still talking about the survey being the dominant collection tool. And I remember, I forget who it was, I'm sorry, but it was such a great quote uh, or a great phrase that I hadn't heard before about like building from the margins. And I think that it's really important when I think about this through a social justice lens, that, 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 that everything that we are exploring is, is, is available, accessible, truly accessible to everyone, including, including plain language. I mean, that's the other thing we haven't really talked about. And I tried to talk about this a little bit at our last meeting about just like some brains like, like are, um, need, need the concrete language as opposed to the abstract even as it relates to vision, like vision is an abstract term, but the, the what's important to you doesn't, need, doesn't necessarily need to be abstract, but it's about like just inclusive language and, 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 and an appropriate reading level, you know, um, plain language for the community. Cause we're not talking about just our students. We're talking about the whole community. Um, and if we really want to make sure that, you know, we talk about, you know, many of the other isms of, you know, um, explicit or implicit discrimination, we don't talk enough about ableism. And I don't want the community to think that we are an ableist group who wrote a survey that is only available to some people. No, thank you. I, I want to come back for that to that, but I want to just hear the hear Kale and Susie. So I had the same I, like kind of idea in the beginning about how I know a lot of people who don't take surveys or don't take surveys. I don't want to say well, because there's nothing like great about them, but like just like they're, it's not their primary mode. Like for, personally for me, I would hate taking surveys. I'd love to just like talk with someone about it. Um, but, and, and I don't know who said it and about like the length, but for me, just looking at the survey, I have it in front of me right now. Um, questions 21, which are all the demographic questions. And then I personally love the, the branch about like, why why isn't your kid enrolled in public school or whatever? Because I think it's a, a question that goes mostly unnoticed, like never, it's not something that's brought up a lot. Um, I just feel like, and we've kept talking about this, but like, 15 like it's 21 questions and I think like a lot of them feel almost repetitive in a sense um and it's like not a bad thing because they're getting in that you know very finite like answers but I think I think you you just lose people when they scroll down and see 21 questions versus 15 or 13 I just think that's something that kind of has to be notice but I also I think that the wording of it for the most part is you know high school friendly I wouldn't say it's middle school and younger but I think it's high school friendly like none of these are truly like mind-boggling questions that I'm like why are like what are they asking for maybe they're worded in like some more fancier language but like for the most part I am only seeing like you know like some of the faculty questions kids aren't going to need to answer so I think from like the wording of it it's not terrible or not not terrible but it's pretty good I just wanted to mention that yeah thank you um I want to hear from Susie and then uh, uh, I just want to make sure I can scroll through the comments because there are some other questions being raised there go ahead Susie okay um 
I, after reading the newer version of the survey, I felt a little bit better about it. It was easier for me to read and like digest. I think we have to just know that some people are going to love this survey. We're going to get a lot of information from those people and other people are not going to it's not going to be for them. We already know that this is not, there's not going to be one thing. There's a lot of things. So I think we need to just like agree on this long survey as an option. And we need to like come up. I think if we can spend time and energy thinking of what the other options are, then we'll feel more like everyone's included in it. Like, you know, there's all kinds of great ideas of how to get, especially high school and middle school kids to talk about what they think is important. You know, if we do some sort of like uh, video response for things, or um, if we can spend time thinking of what the other ways of getting the information are, I, I think that we'll feel better because so much focus is on this right now that this is like all we are thinking of where we're getting information from, but there's going to be other ways. So some people are going to love a long survey and there is a lot of information that would be really great to have. So I, I think that the long survey is not a bad thing. I think it just needs to be one of the things that we're doing. And if we can kind of get some kind of concrete other things going, I think we'll feel better. Thank you, Susie. You're welcome. Um, I just want to call out that, um, let's see, Mel saying in the chat, yes, each format of participation needs to be equal. And I don't, think we would be weighing one thing over the other. Some things will be easier to quantify, but I think that we need to be mindful of, right, if, if we have folks, if some of us are taking time to go interact through drawing with kids in, middle, in um, elementary school, we need to value those responses. Um, Mel, to your question about universal design for learning, which is a great question, uh, I think that sort of I, speaking for myself, yes, I value that, uh, but it's a little bit of a yes and or a yes but in the sense that the pressure, uh, um, one of the interests that I am trying to keep in mind as I try to facilitate this process is that we do have to get to a final product that is legible to the public and to the board and that is reflective of the things that we have heard. Um, some of that is efficiently accomplished through things like a written survey. Okay, if we, if, if we accept that is true, then I think your challenge that I really appreciate is, okay, Nathan, how then do we be inclusive in other ways to ensure that those voices that don't interact well with that format are heard? And I, I'm hoping that you and others are, are hearing receptivity to that um, while, you know, I'm saying this core survey and the questions within it are important, I think are important to this process, but it's a, it's a both and not a, not an exclusive instrument. Uh, and then the uh, comments about language, I'm, you know, Kale, thank you for your comment about language and Susie some as well. I did consciously go through the whole survey and, and rewrite a number of these pieces um, and took what I thought, uh, I think it was Susie's suggestion, you know, so in the first meeting we had, I think it was the first meeting, we had some really great comments about sort of accessible design from the edges. Um, and then we had Joe saying, all right, I'm going to defend academic jargon or educational jargon because sometimes educational jargon reflects hard won um, concepts like social and emotional learning. And so Susie's suggestion was to use the really simple language to talk about, um, in that case, it was uh, <clears throat> understanding their, so changing social emotional learning to understanding their emotions and those of others, which I think is pretty accessible language. And then in parentheses, social emotional learning. So keeping the terminology as a, as a sort of using the survey as an education tool, but making the first part of that response really accessible. So I, I hope that was visible that I made those changes. If, uh, if I didn't go far enough, I'm happy to hear that feedback as well. Um, if 
if it works for folks, um, what I'd like to do is work backwards from the thought exchange idea, which is a very brief, you know, that's six questions or something like that. See if we can get some agreement on that. See if we can get some agreement on an outline for listening sessions. Uh, you heard me say sort of as anecdotally that Tina has offered to meet a bunch of times with folks through the network of the senior center. Um, but that's not the only sort of venue or group um, that, to which we can deploy a sort of distilled outline. And then I've gotten some good feedback about sort of redundancies within the survey. And I think we can still trim it down a little bit. So I'd like to get to that as the third thing is that's probably the most sort of wordsmithy and um, to use Kale's word uh, tedious. Um, so if that's an okay proposed pathway, then let's do that. And then I'm just gonna put a marker in, we've got about 40 minutes left. I do wanna to get to some calendar work. So for example, Tina has said here, three days in the next month where I intend to meet with people first on Zoom and then also in person two different times on the same day through the senior center. Um, I'm setting up a, an additional Zoom user uh, through my Zoom account that we can, that anyone here can use if you set up a time to hold a Zoom gathering. Um, but I wanna get some dates on the calendar, assuming that we can agree on some of these instruments. And as far as I'm concerned, that includes you know, Mel saying, Nathan, will you come with me to Union Elementary and let's let's figure out if we can get into some classrooms uh, with the permission of the teacher and do some work to make this really accessible. Uh, I'm absolutely here for that. Okay, for the rest of this meeting. All right, so uh, I am gonna pull up. So the, the core outline that I've got Hang on a second, I just need to get this where I can see it and see you simultaneously. Uh, the core outline I've got includes, I want our graduates to be, so if you're following along on the document, that is. Can you share it on your, share it on sure. our screen? Yep, just a second. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So, and I left the numbers because the numbers correspond to the, um, I didn't leave them, I, I added them in. The numbers correspond to the, to the overall survey right now. So I want our graduates to be known for there. This is sort of a brand question, right? If somebody were to say uh, to somebody else in Vermont, oh, that's a, that's a Montpelier graduate and uh, Montpelier graduates fill in the blank. You know, it's sort of a, what are, what are students known for? To me, academic excellence for our students means to learn effectively and thrive in our district. I think students need, this is sort of about, you know, supportive, what kind of, what kind of support and dynamics in the, in the schools do we need? Characteristics that I hope students develop in our district include, and uh, somebody made the point privately that um, number two, I want graduates to be known for and characteristics that I hope students develop are similar enough that we might be able to combine those. Areas in which, for which I think schools should provide support or explicit teaching. Um, I've had some suggestions that we could cut that. Um, uh, I'm gonna keep my own thoughts to myself on that one. Number 12 is the values menu. Uh, but if it's a if it's a listening session, it doesn't have to be presented as a menu. Uh, Fifteen plus the question about facilities and um, you know how do we think about our facilities and resources? Number twenty one is a demographic. I'm a student, parent, etc. Twenty two is what town I reside in. Twenty three, if you have a student, if the respondent has a student, my student is at you know, whichever school or um, enrolled outside of the district, and then age bracket. So that was my first swipe at, if we're gonna distill 
to get the big survey down to points that we would hope would be covered in a listening session. These are they. I can't, I don't, let me see if I can get this display to be better so I can see you all. Um, yes, there we go. I also have to plug my computer in, so I'm gonna be off screen for a minute. Go ahead and unmute and start talking if you have thoughts about this. Does anyone mind if I make an observation? Um, Go for it. Um, there are three questions I wanna ask people when I talk to them directly in person, whether it will maybe on a phone, um, what's working, what's not, and what do you want? That to me is like super distilled, super simple. And then from there, I'm getting, you know, we're moving towards these more detailed questions. And I hope that that's an okay way for me to approach. I hope that we're not thinking that we're all going to be reading from the survey as we talk to individuals. But I think my hope is that we're we're engaging with people, we're showing them that we care, and then based on their own ability or interest or motivation, they're gonna engage with what tools we put out there. Um, maybe that's a listening session, maybe that's a drawing, um, maybe they make a video, you know, or a music video, I don't know. Kids love that, make a TikTok, you know, I don't know. Um, but all of these things can, can get information. Um, and the, the final thing I'm thinking is I really don't want this group to feel a lot of pressure to come up with a finished product. I think our goal is to have a product that we all believe in and maybe we gather, we let it sit for a bit and we come back to it um, or something like that. You know, I don't know. I don't want there to be a product. I don't want there to be pressure to have a product. I want there to be a good process and to, to, to have a product that we're proud of. Right, thank you. I see Libby. Yeah, I just don't wanna get away from the purpose, the board's purpose here, you know? So um, if, if my concern would be with those three questions, what's working, what's not, um, people will be very specific about their child's experience. So what's not working is that I can, I'm just assuming that so-and-so's teacher doesn't do this or kids don't behave in this way. Um, it, and the purpose of this work is to get at um, what the community values in education. And so I, I worry that those questions wouldn't get us there necessarily. They might, they might, but um, Thinking about, uh, let me think you just you just scroll down a little bit, but you know when the idea of branding and and when you think about a Montpelier High School graduate, what do, what words come to mind? What do you want them to have? Um, that gets at value a little bit more than what's working, what's not, because people are going to speak to very specific ideas for their child's immediate experience or their experience three years ago that perhaps they loved or perhaps they didn't love. Um, and so that that just worried, that gets me worried a little bit that it takes us away from the purpose of the group, which is which is really getting at the community's values for education and kids. Does that make sense? What if, um, I, Rhett, don't hold back, but it, um, Libby, I, I, share your perspective in in a sense but i also you know one of the things i've appreciated that you've said earlier Rhett, is that your first question is how are you doing are you you're i think you want your approach you're imagining a phone call and you want your approach to be empathetic to whoever's answering that phone as a way to build some sort of rapport and so a way that I can see your three prompts, even if it goes down a rabbit hole of what's my kid's experience with their particular teacher. If you're okay, I, I can see it working that you're okay to sort of listen through that, take those notes and honor that and then get to the other stuff. I don't, Libby, I don't know, would that work from your perspective or do you think it gets too far off track? And Caitlin, I see your hand. 
just think we have to always have the purpose of the group in, in our heads, right? So the purpose is to get at values. It's not to get at necessarily particularly liter particular literacy programs or particular programming that the kids have access to. It's to get at, we value this as a community This is, and we're formalizing that. Um, and I, I worry when, I worry when we're offering the opportunity to get very specific about teachers or about other kids in the classroom or specific events that are happening in the particular classroom that that um, can take people down a hole that may not be useful for the project. Good. Caitlin and Joe. Um, yeah, so a few things. Um, I'm not connecting with the questions that are on the current survey. I think they are way too wordy. I think some of them could be combined into one question. I think it's, again, I'm just going to say way too long. Um, uh, the whole like first page of like describing what it is, I think it's way too much words. Um, I also, when Rhett said those three questions, I immediately was like, oh, I can connect to those questions. And then hearing what Libby's saying, I'm like, okay, are, am I like just way off on what we're doing here? And like, is there a way to combine the questions that Rhett just posed with values? Because, and also, I guess I'm just confused because like, what if someone were to say, I value having second learning second language programs? Like that's sort of, yes, it's a program and it's specific, but also it feels like that person's value. So I guess thinking about like that we are a value committee, how, how can we get there without being specific? I guess, and also just more, less words, more feeling. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go, I see uh, Joe, then Susie, and then Mel, and I'm gonna do a time check at 7.04, and I am, I am feeling the pressure of moving the process further along. Um, so now I've got Joe, uh, Joe, Susie, Mel, and uh, had you, Merrick. Don't, Merrick, that doesn't mean put your hand down. Your voice is valuable. Go, Joe. I just had two thoughts. Uh, the first is just, well, they both kind of have to do with zooming out. I, I like the, the questions about academic excellence and what areas of explicit teaching should the district do? I just think zooming out from those, I think the term academic excellence might be a little too narrowing, right? And it's just one facet of excellence in schools. It's important, don't get me wrong, but just one facet. And then, you know, like the explicit teaching question. Yeah, number 10 there. Thanks for scrolling up, Nathan. Um, I think that's a really good and fruitful area for us to explore, right? Because I think the more we expand the idea of what a school is in our community, the more we can get at that the values that folks have been saying and what the vision actually is. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Mel, go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry, Susie, then Mel, then Merrick. I just think that um, some of the questions probably could be combined. Like, you know, I want our graduates to be known for whatever that gets at values and we could drop the value question. But basically what I wanna say is that us as a board of people who care about the community and we're trying to get their information, some people just wanna talk about their experience and we're gonna to have to, if we're talking to people, to humans, and we're not just depending on write this number, check this off, like we're gonna to have to be the ones to process it with them and filter out the information in a way that meets whatever our, you know, whatever we want, but like, you know, we can't tell people how to answer a question. If we ask them a question, then we got to listen to what they have to say. Thank you. Mel and Merrick. And related to that, it's, I, I think that in our kind of 
the default of society where things like should be efficient and like, you know, all most productive and all that, like, like it's hard because when there, like, there are so many people who, when they feel that, like they, they already feel excluded when they feel that from, from a, you know, a business, from a doctor, from a professional of any kind, like that, it's not going to be efficient in, for, for a lot of people. Um, and we still really want to engage the people because even a term like academic excellence, like that means something to me, but even re- like right now in like COVID chaos, like that's actually not even on my value system. And for so many people, it's like the, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs are not being met. Like the basic needs of a lot of our community members are not being met. So yes, we need like the big picture academic excellence vision, but we also, it, it would be great to engage the community to find out what needs they want met. Because if you don't have your needs met, then you really can't engage in this higher level, this higher order planning process. That's just like a brain thing. So uh, I see Elliot, um, Mel, I think that to me, for example, uh, to learn the number seven on this distilled version, to learn effectively and thrive in our district, I think students need. I'm hoping that people will respond to the kind of things you're talking about. And I think we have to acknowledge the sort of uh, the context of COVID, the, the time that we're in, in, in so many ways and the pressures that that puts on anybody. Uh, but we still need to get the work done and get, the inf- get information to the district about what people, what people's vision is for the future. And so I think that we are going to have to make lots of sort of small and maybe a few big compromises about how we move forward. Um, Merrick and then Elliot, and then I'm going to take control back and push us forward. Alrighty. So, I mean, we're going back and forth on like what questions to ask. I'm, I'm not totally sure if we, if we, if rather we go with a specific approach or a more general approach, if we're really going to get all that different of answers anyway. But if we are to go with a like more broad approach, I think that we can do what I said in the chat of like asking what values are working, what values are not, and what values do you want to see? So which is like what Rhett was saying, but adding values into it specifically. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Elliot? Um, I wanted to echo Susie a little bit, but I, um, with like the more specific questions, I think that if we have what Rhett had said with the, like what's working and what's not, we will be able to get um, like, I think more helpful information just because at least for me, when there's really general questions, I have a hard time connecting it to my life. But if we ask what's working for a specific person, then we're going to be able to get, um, you know, like their, what they value. And I think that that would, we'd be able to get that. And then if, I'm sorry, this really isn't making a sense when I'm saying it out loud, but if the person asking the questions, they, this is not making sense. I apologize, but I just, I think that more specific questions or the more like directed towards one person that we're asking, I think that those could be very helpful in, I don't know, this is, I'm, I apologize. No, I don't think you should. I think you're, I, do, let me see if I'm hearing you accurately. I'm hearing you to say the general questions and what I think Mel might describe as abstract are ones that you don't connect well with, whereas Rhett's questions about what is working and what's not, which may feel more specific, might be a better entry for you. And it and to take Susie's point, uh, it's up to us, I think it was Susie, up to us to sort of filter responses for uh, answers that point towards vision and values and answers that are just like, this, this experience was really bad for this reason, or this was really good for this reason. Is that, is that, am I getting that close to right, Elliot? Yes, that is, that is what I meant. 
Okay. Because people's responses, those are the things that are like important to people's hearts. You know what I mean? What they want to talk about is their values, probably, even if they don't word it that way. Okay. Um, I'm loving this and I'm, I am finding it very helpful. I think, uh, let's see. First of all, I'm imagining Rhett making a phone call. I'm not supervising Rhett on that phone call or anybody else, right? How Rhett opens that conversation is up to Rhett. Um, in a listening session that Tina is holding at the senior center, I'm not supervising that either, nor do I have an interest in sort of tightly controlling it. What I do have an interest in is um, creating tools that give us some uniformity in terms of which buckets we put responses into. Whether, whether I have to open a TikTok account so that I can follow the hashtag MRPS visioning on TikTok, I'm assuming that there are hashtags that are functional on TikTok, maybe I'm wrong. I'm willing to do that. Um, but but if as I do that, if I'm transcribing things or somehow gathering that data, I will still be trying to fit this response into a question about academics, this response into a question about um, physical and emotional safety, right? That's a part of the way someone like me does their work in terms of community engagement is that I, we have to filter and translate and present to the board, who in my case is the client, in your case is your sort of public representation at the school or in the district. So that's just to name it a different way. I think many roads can lead to Rome. And what I'm trying to do is figure out, can we use the roads that, I'm, that I've drafted so far? And I'm hearing qualified, Yes, maybe. Um, so, and, and this is actually, this is a, another reason where I want us to get moving. If, if I've really misjudged and, and nobody wants to do the full survey and it's really inaccessible, we'll find that out pretty quickly. Um, if, uh, if the thought exchange, which has sort of one vision values question is sufficient, and gives us all the information we want, we'll find that out pretty quickly too. My guess is that's not, but it's a good entry into this, you know, that we exist and we're doing this process. Um, so I'm, I want us to move forward and see what we get. So here's a question. We've got, <laughs> we've got 15 minutes left. Um, if I distill what I've heard today, including making another edit of the broad survey to try to trim it down uh, with Caitlin's voice firmly in my head, uh, but also Joe's. Are you okay if we try, if we launch these, give it a good effort, try to connect with the communities and the networks we connect, we're connected with, and then see where we are in two weeks? All right, I'm watching faces. No one has, you know, made a made a major frowny face. Tina, how are we connecting, Nathan? Uh, well, <laughs> I would like to get to that. So, do you mean how how are we as a committee connecting with the community if we have these tools? Yeah. So, um, I'll ask Libby to answer the thought exchange piece in a minute. Um, I think so. If I create the major, sur the big survey, but not the not the dominant survey, if if that becomes a link to a Google form, that's something that you can share via text, via WhatsApp, via email, anything you want, and then encourage people to reply. We can share it on front porch forum. Um, I will make a print version so we can literally put print versions out at the library at um, the 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 Roxbury Village store at the front desk at the Roxbury Village School. And then we can get those back in envelopes and tabulate them into the, into the Google form. Um, if we're doing listening sessions, then we take this outline or, or slightly edited version of this outline. And Tina has that in front of her when she is doing a Zoom call with senior center folks. Um, and then um, we can start to hopefully schedule some community gatherings and then using this outline roughly, okay, we want to ideally touch on these points, but I slash we will design, you know, 
ways that we're going to engage with that community group. It's anyway, we can talk about that design later, but I think it's, it's multi pronged. It is, um, I can't remember which student talked about using the TA structure within the schools, at least the high school. Um, it's, you know, Mel and I confer about, okay, who, who do we know at UES or at Roxbury village school who might be willing to take this up in their classroom or have one of us as a guest. So I think it's multiple ways. And then we come back in two weeks and we say, okay, this was productive. This was a struggle. This question needs to change. This is great feedback and we move forward. So in the next five minutes, are we deciding who's going to do what, when? I would love for that to be the case. Um, but let me, before we get to that, I want to get, I want to feel secure that folks trust that I'm hearing what's being said and that I will do my best to translate the feedback that I'm hearing into at least three instruments that you all can then start to use. And I'm not, I should be reading the chat. Okay. Okay. So let me, I'm going to switch. Can I stop screen sharing for a minute? Does that work for you guys? All right. Stop share. Okay. Uh, give me a second. Okay, so from my perspective, there was another document that I sent, which I will open just for my own reference and then read through to you guys. Give me a second. So this was the, hang on. Uh, community, community engagement and propo proposal and calendar. Uh oh, all right. Libby's computer just died. So we may or may not have Libby for the next little bit. Okay, so uh, I'm thinking about the community engagement piece as through a number of lenses, right? Who are our constituents? Uh, the, the examples that I gave, that's not going to work. Hang on. The examples that I included in that document were uh, students, students, community members, teachers, and staff. That was something that somebody else mentioned. Uh, Dottie, you mentioned more or less similar buckets. Uh, towns, Roxbury and Montpelier. Uh, venues, so Roxbury Village School, Roxbury Country Store, Montpelier High School, Middle School, UES, Senior Center, the Civic Center. So. I'm, I was trying to sort of jump start this thinking, right? When I go to watch one of my kiddos play soccer indoors at the Civic Center, which is usually an ice rink, I can bring paper versions of this, or I can connect with people there and say, hey, you know, if I text you this link, would you respond? Um, if, um, you know, if Amira goes to school and has a time to connect with an activities group that she's with, maybe Amira is part of drama. Uh, can Amiris then to say, hey, in sometime in the next few days, will you, if I send you this, will you guys respond to it? Um, but that's, so I think it's useful to think in terms of how do, our, how do our lives normally take us and where can we connect with people there? And then be more intentional, right? I want to connect, I personally want to go connect with folks in Roxbury because that's a group that we really want to hear from and I want to support Rhett in that. Uh, Tina wants to connect with folks at the senior center perhaps partly because that's a network she's already connected to. I want, uh, you know, Carmen and myself to be part of some of those meetings that Tina's having because I want to hear that stuff firsthand as well. And I really am excited about um, sort of generational connection or cross community connection and things like that. So, uh, hang on a second. Um, are those helpful in terms of Jumpstarting this thinking. I wonder, 
I wonder if in the chat, if folks think, okay, here, here are two ways that I can engage in the next two weeks. Can you plug into the chat? You know, if you were Tina, you might say senior center and I don't know what else Tina would say. Um, that's a way to sort of, you know, we can collect this without everybody talking. Okay, let me say something which I've already said to Nathan quickly, which is in order to get to people at the senior center, it has to go in a newsletter and they have to know ahead of time. So it's probably not going to happen in the next two weeks. It'll happen after that, but that's okay. I'll take all your feedback from what you've done. But I'd also love to go to the middle school because that's where I've spent a lot of my life. So if anybody would love to go with me, I'd love to have you. Caitlin, yes, uh, we can post on Friends of Montpelier Schools on the Facebook page. Do you want to own that one, Caitlin? Yeah, sure. Uh, Libby, uh, I see uh, Susie, U UES staff and Front Porch Forum. Libby, what I've asked folks to do is in the chat, talk about venues or areas of their life or constituents that they intend to reach out to in the next two weeks. Got it. Sorry, everyone. My computer just suddenly disappeared on me. <laughs> and Susie doesn't have to be the only one on Front Porch Forum. My front porch forum for Roxbury is connected to the Northfield community and my school board member email is associated with an account. So I can certainly use that for, for this community as well as <clears throat> team up with Amira and Dottie. And I would like to participate with Montpelier, Montpelier folks too in Montpelier. So just reach out, I guess, I don't know. So what, um, I, what I will do is I will assemble this into a list and it'll, I'll make that into a shared, a, a, a public document that's in our public folder and I'll email it to all of you. So you, you know, Rhett, you could potentially say, hey, Susie, can I join you for that? Okay. That work? Um, I am seeing stuff in the chat. Joe, I see your stuff. And Joe, on the MHS faculty, um, I would like to confer with you a little about making sure that we connect well with faculty. Um, you know, a number of different ways. Uh, Nick, bus stops in the mornings, what a cool idea. Um, Amira, uh, Montpelier High School Racial Justice Alliance, right? Excellent. I didn't get all that. You want to you want to put it in the chat? That's me who said it, not Amelia. Oh, <laughs> Amelia, very sorry. I only had the. Uh, oh, I I should have read that more carefully. Thank you. No problem. Uh, let's see. QR code, Nick. Uh, probably we can. I've written that down. Um. Emory school clubs or others, yes. Kale, what's RP group? Uh, restorative practices. And we have a I don't know, school group, I don't even know. Uh, they're a convent conference with, I think, two or so kids from every TA um, the 22nd or 23rd of this month. Excellent. OK. Uh, Rhett, I saw you with the RVS Friday evening. Uh, Carmen Middle School, yes, love it. And then um, Merrick, you'd like to go with Tina to MSMS, that would be terrific. I see your other notes in there. Mira, classmates TA, love it. Uh, Elliot, uh, Gay Straight Alliance at MHS, terrific. Okay. So 
I'm getting goosebumps. This is exciting for me. And I'm really, really interested to see what we have to look at two weeks from now. Um, we got about four minutes left. I'm gonna open the floor. Any reflections um, on process? And I wanna say for myself, I'm especially grateful to Caitlin who was trying as gently as possible, possible to say, gosh darn it, Nathan, you were not responsive enough to my concerns and I, I'm here for that. So I appreciate you um, saying that stuff out loud. Thank you. Um, so just real quickly, I think I missed, uh, you're going to, to complete the survey and send it to us to share with people or we're just gonna ask them general questions? Uh, I'm going to refine the three instruments that I put, uh, put in that document. One is the, the broad survey, one is the outline of, of sort of distilled topics, uh, and then the other is the thought exchange, very basic, you know, one question about values essentially or vision, and then some demographic stuff as an entry into being on our mailing list and being aware of this process. And so I, I was asking for sort of if, if you all trust me to, to try to honor what I've heard and then let's try it and let's see how this goes and we can refine as we go. Susie, I did see a hand. Yeah, I was wondering what Caitlin was saying too, like more specifically, what are our responsibilities for right now? But also too, this is thinking ahead to the next time, but maybe people's wheels can get turning that I want to offer the at least the elementary school kitchen and cafeteria as a place for community gatherings to happen. I think that for me, I'm always looking for a reason to have a party or food or whatever, but I think that a lot of people respond to that. Um, I work at the kitchen there. I s super love doing things like that and planning things like that. Um, I think it could be really fun to get different groups from different schools involved in things like that to make it a whole experience and then more people might be likely to like come and share information. So just if people wanna brainstorm party ideas that can involve, you know, their school groups or what's just to start thinking of those things because hopefully next time we can move along to other things like that. Thank you. I see the chat between Rhett and Dottie and Amira, and uh, I'm asking Rhett if you would please include me because I, I definitely want to be part of some of the Roxbury work. Okay. Uh, I'm grateful once again that you guys are giving this your time and uh, feel free to contact me outside of this. I'm trying to be responsive to those and also incorporate feedback I get uh, sort of <clears throat> asynchronously to this group. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your Monday and uh, look for links to completed work from me in the next two days. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a bit of a, you know, it's going to be a bit of work translating all, refining it and then translating it into stuff that's ready for the public, but that's what I'm shooting for. Thanks, you guys. I'm going to be on for a little bit because I need to capture, I need to make sure I'm capturing the chat and all that stuff. Take care.